if I can just fix these problems out in the world, my life will be better. And so we thought we'd just kind of see if we can um, finish up that conversation, if yeah. we will, in terms of how you see that and how you experience that and how uh, the work orients towards um, the war that we create within and the war that we see without. So, so you know, if, if my child, for example, um, like knocks over a glass of milk, okay, and, and I say to my child, I told you to be careful, what's the matter with you? Okay, how many, of, how many of you experience that as violent? You feel it inside. And if you're that child, you hear it, there's something the matter with me. Mm -hmm. Because mother, father said, what's the matter with you? Okay, so there's something the matter with me. Okay, so what's the matter with me? You know, later, maybe I feel guilty. I was a little too harsh with that child. Okay, so now I'm wearing guilt. That tells me that I'm off. But then my mind could go to, well, I told him to be careful, and he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm putting it back on the child when I am the cause of the violence. Mm -hmm. The child is innocent. He didn't think, well, I think I'll just do this and upset mom, and, mm -hmm. and it didn't work that mm -hmm. way. So now that violence in my home and a mind that would create violence like that in the home at any level, that is the mind that I'm going to go out, you know, as that mother, I'm going out in the world and I'm going to do something important. I mean, look at the mind that's going out in the world to do something important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and make yeah. change. And make change. And let's say, I mean, I am not a great problem solver, but my heart's in the right place. I'm going to do everything I can to make change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But look at the mind I'm making, making these changes with. There's something way off. So as, as, as you began, the conversation with, it's like, that has to be taken care of on the inside mm -hmm. before it's ever going to change out here. Mm -hmm. The way I speak to my child. I mean, how many of you, I mean, we can't even determine whose turn it is to do the dishes without blame <laughs> or, or some kind of argument going on. It's not my turn. You know, that came up yesterday in the <laughs> Q&A. It's not my turn. No, it's, it's my turn. It's, you know, it's yeah. on and on. And what prevents that is the egoic identification with, um, what, what prevents that learning from your perspective that sees the problems as outside and does not necessarily understand the own violence? Limited self-awareness. Limited awareness of self. And the only solution I know to that from experience, because it's, it's, it's a practice that came to me, you know, 30 years ago, I didn't have any other practice but speaking that way to my children mm -hmm. and then feeling guilty over it, etc. But the only way I know is self-inquiry. And so, as you know, Soren, that's what I do. You know, I, I invite people to self-inquiry in the world mm -hmm. and it really works for, uh, it, you know, if a person's mind is open to it, it works. Mm -hmm. But, you know, self-inquiry is a tough thing because you're, you're going against, as you said earlier, that identification that's so in, I'm the mother, that's the child, my job is to teach them, mm -hmm. my job is to be focused on that child mm -hmm. and teach mm -hmm. them good manners in the world so they'll mm -hmm. have a happy life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even, if, even if it hurts me more than them. <laughs> you know, it's, and my parents tra taught me that way, and so mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you that way and deal with it. Yeah, yeah. so we have like a, a, a mass... Um, trance going on, a mass, um, a, a mass consciousness mm -hmm. where we actually are doing war with each other. Now that's, there's something off with that. Yeah. And I, I, I think a lot of people might, uh, once you bring it up, actually um, 
uh, realize that, that, that there's an element of war that's going on. I think um, the, the challenge becomes um, in those moments, how do we do the turnaround or how do we, how do we begin to shift that because it's yes. the shame that often comes up like, oh shit, I said this when I shouldn't have said this. Yes. And this back and forth between unconsciousness, reactivity, and then yes. shame and, yes. and self-inquiry gets us out of that channel or out of that Well, of that it, loop. Um, it shifts the mind. It, you know, every time, every time we question an assumption or a judgment that we're believing, mm-hmm. and we get really quiet in it, mm-hmm. and, you know, the work is uh, what I'm talking about here. It's a way to identify and question those judgments and assumptions that are running through my head. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, um, um, my child was unconscious, he just spilled the milk, just Mm -hmm. unconscious, okay. So my child was unconscious, is it true? That's the first question, there are only four. (laughs) (laughs) If there were more than that, I never could have kept up with it. So, you know, is it true? So now I'm going to, I'm going to just meditate on that moment in time, even though it's the next day, maybe I'm still feeling guilty, yeah. it, it, or maybe it was last year, it, it doesn't matter, when it arises. Yeah. So let's say it's the next day, I'm feeling guilty, so I'm just going to visualize that moment in time again, he, there's, he's unconscious. Is it true? And now I can, you know, I can see that I didn't even see the child mm-hmm. at the table mm-hmm. when he knocked it over. I only saw it after the fact. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the answer is no. You know, can I absolutely know that it's true? I'm going to check again that he's unconscious, you know, having to do in the situation where he spilled the milk. Mm-hmm. No. So now notice... I'm going to notice the third question, how I react when I believed the thought. Mm -hmm. He's so unconscious. He's unconscious. Okay, how do I react when I believe the thought? I looked up, I saw the milk. I looked up, I saw his face, and his face looks like, oh, hell. Here she comes. (laughs) He looks startled. And how do I react when I think the thought, he, he spilled the milk, he's unconscious? I immediately attack my child. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can see the look on my face. I can see I'm startled, but not from my child, from seeing the glass on the floor. Mm-hmm. And I can continue to meditate on that moment in time. Do you all see it in your mind's eye? How many of you see that situation in your mind's eye? Would you raise your hand? Yeah. How many of you have been in a similar situation with someone? (laughs) Yeah. So it's not uncommon. That's what I mean by mass hypnosis. So who would I be in that situation with my child without the thought he's unconscious? something wrong with him, he's unconscious. Gosh, the milk is beautiful on the floor, actually. (laughs) And I can see the glass, and I can see the light hitting it. Mm. I can actually see drops over here that I missed in the situation, even though I saw them. Mm. I can see that I could calm my child My child looks very upset and nothing happened, but he spilled the milk. Mm. I can support him, Mm. I can help him. Mm. We can clean up the milk together. Mm. Mm. So my child's unconscious, he spilled the milk. My child's unconscious, turned around, I'm unconscious. Okay, where in that situation, where where was I unconscious? You know, I just shot from the hip and just went for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I attacked. Mm-hmm. I attacked my own mm-hmm. child. That's unconscious. So if I feel guilt, now all of a sudden, guilt is not this terrible thing. Mm-hmm. Guilt is what brings me back to inquiry so I can determine, realize for myself 
the cause of that guilt, the cause of my own suffering. Because until then, the cause of my own suffering was my son. Right. Now the cause of my own suffering is my lack of consciousness. Right. Any time that I should feel anger arise or anxiety, any kind of anxiety, guilt, a, a kind of depression, then I've got some work to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to do it. I can just go on with my life. You hear that attitude? I can just go on with my life. Or I can go on with my life. Mm. You know, without, without the, the depression and, and, and this, this consciousness of excitement and curiosity, like the curiosity of a child. Yeah. You know, and, and, and now I'm fit to solve the problems in the world. I'm fit to solve big problems like, who's going to do the dishes tonight? <laughs> but until I'm really good in this, you know, until I'm really good in my world, I'm not going to be called to do greater things. Mm. I'm unqualified. <laughs> Obviously, if there's, if I, you know, the war with the self, yeah. the war at home, yeah. those are the trenches, the, the war, going to work, the workplace, I mean, on your way to work, are you, do you have the curiosity and excitement of a child, even if you're 80? I mean, if, are you wearing that? Or are you go, oh gosh, you know, oh God, I'm just, not another day with him in the office. Or, you know, that, that attitude, anywhere on a scale from 1 to 10, if, the, if depression is just at a 1, if 10 is the top of the scale, we have a right to more. Freedom is our birthright, and that's what I'm talking about. Freedom, freedom to be in the world without being one of the problem makers. Mm -hmm. And the problem maker is usually unconscious because it's their fault. I mean, my child spilled the milk. That's not on me. Yeah. And that's true for work. That's true for presidential candidates. That's true for uh, all kinds of situations. Yeah. The kid is just an example of anything external. Yeah. And, and, and look who I'm raising. <laughs> you know, he could be a politician when he grows up. And what's he going to do when someone spills the milk? It's not going to be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> he learned it all from me. <laughs>